Okay, so, so many of the forums asked me to uh, show them pictures that didn't happen, so that's what we're going to do here. Okay. Uh, what I've got is a petroleum jelly cotton ball, right, and a one inch end cap. Uh, this is a one inch nipple here. I'm just going to light this up because uh, I'm not sure if this is going to be, if I want this to be a terribly long video or not. You know, but the burn time when I did this in my garage was about uh, half an hour. So. I'm going to spend the time rambling about some other things too, so hopefully we'll keep you entertained. And you'll be able to toss all sorts of comments at me and it'll be great. You occasionally hear a voice in the background, that's my girlfriend from England, who's Romanian. More on that later if people are really interested. Okay, so, spark light and go. Alrighty, so, what I've done is I've taken a petroleum soaked uh, cotton ball, and I have really saturated it by hand. Uh, I actually bought a pot today uh, for the purposes of, uh, well, gelling cotton balls. <clears throat> a couple things too. Um, the goal was to try to create a reusable sparklight tinder. I really like this sparklight tinder. This stuff's awesome, but it's 30 cents each if you buy like 200. Okay. It's not bad if you need it for survival purposes. Cool. I was actually looking for an alternative to a lighter. Still got a flame going on here that's more than enough to, uh, to light up a cigarette, and I'm just going to hold this over so you can see it. It's not really burning a lot of surface area. And part of that is because the flame is being restricted by that end cap. There is uh, some reasonable like, zero to two mile an hour wind out here, so like the wind factor is not really, really high. I uh, wasn't able to really test this in wind factor, so to speak, so there's that. I also notice that if you don't um, really uh, gel your con balls, and this is sort of hit or miss sometimes too, uh, the flame will go out all by itself. So, you know, is it really reusable? I don't know. Uh, on to cooler stuff. So, this is um, what I did with my spark light. I have the Allen wrench in here and the flints in a plastic bag, which I will pull out for you here in a second. Is 9 mile an hour winds today? Yeah, coming from northwest. Okay, so 9 mile an hour winds going from northwest. My house, the backyard is on the north side. So for what it's worth, wind is blowing this way. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. No particular hurry with this thing. Um, like I said, this is really more of a, just a stuff to show you because, you know, it's cool to burn stuff. Alright. Um, quick thanks to the people over at Five Coal. They're amazing. Andy over at Five Coal answered a lot of questions uh, for me about Paracord and I use 750 Paracord for just about everything now. It's better than duct tape. In fact, Five Coal Supply. Um, I took the extra flint and the allen wrench wrapped them up in a bit of paper because I have the memory of a goldfish and I lose everything so very procedurally driven All right. and put that in there not to particularly waterproof it I mean you could take a, a small ziploc bag uh, which in fact I'll show you here in a second the rest of my fire bag so here's this Put this in here, that's great. I also have in here a bit of, see, and there's a cotton ball going out. So it went out once. It's actually reasonably hot in here. Now I found that relighting this thing the second time, and I was kind of hoping that we wouldn't be relighting this today, because again, it's sort of hit or miss. 
is hit or miss. Um, it's not that you can't relight it, it's just it sometimes will give you more problems than not. Um, more on that comment about fireworks later on. So there it is relit again. Um, have a bit of jute in here. I would say maybe about a foot and a half just because. Have some con balls in here. About three, really. And of course the spark light. What I found in the long run is I really just wanted the ability to light a cigarette. I figure if I can light a cigarette then I can pretty much do anything I need to do. Um, in fair weather. I mean obviously if it's pouring rain outside and you know, Poseidon is planning on landing his mighty fleets, that sort of thing, then nah, it's not going to happen. But I think a lot of times well, we just want like a flame. We don't really, really want it in those conditions. I mean, if you need it, you can. And obviously, you know, jelly con balls, that sort of thing. But not every situation is going to be extreme survival situation. And when it is, that's when you pull out the other stuff. I have an arc lighter because I got in the habit of carrying around a um, portable battery with me in my uh, EDC. The arc lighter is strong enough to uh, deal with 750 paracord if I need to. Cut it with a knife and seal it with this. And of course, tender quick tabs, and this is what I use when things get bad outside. And yeah, just for the record, flame is still going. The, the whole gelling of the cotton ball thing, and I'm pretty new to the whole jelly cotton ball thing, which is part of the reason why I got on the forums in the first place, actually, was to sort of figure out which end was up. Um, it's cool that you can do this, it's cool that it burns for etc. etc. a period of time. Awesome. But I realized that every person I've seen with a, uh, a ferrocerium rod ever, Right, it has a tendency to miss. Right, I'm sure with experience, I think it's a little easier. But I hear a lot of people talking about how they, you know, banging their first serum rods, or you know, they're knocking, uh, kindling all over the place, that sort of thing. In fact, I'll pull one out here for you, just so you can see it. Bleeding thing was in my pocket, memory of a goldfish, like I said before. Right, so, ferrocerium rod. Um, there's a lot of discussion about the content of magnesium in these rods, etc., and it's relevant to a point. You know, the one that I got throws fairly good sparks. Um, some of those lobs that people talk about, of like magnesium burning, etc., which is fine and good. You know, if I wanted to build a campfire off of this, like, I could. Um, I live in Vegas, so we deal with a lot of scrub. We deal with a lot of, like, you'll f occasionally find grasses. Um, believe it or not, when you're actually in Vegas, there are a lot of palm trees. And so you end up running, like, palm fronds all over. Uh, we actually do have pine. We have pine uh, not only in the city, but we do have pine on the mountain ranges. So... You run into pine everywhere. A lot of salt cedar. I don't know how well salt cedar burns. Something I'm going to have to uh, find out eventually. Uh, just out of curiosity. Point is, like, the desert is not necessarily that desert as people see the desert. Like, we're not the Sahara in that regard. Um, one more continuation of the California Sierra Nevada range, which used to be volcanic, so it's actually pretty fertile for what it's worth. So, feral rod. Um, 
Now I could hit this thing of uh, cotton with my ferro rod, potentially set it on fire, uh, and then the bit of cotton would go flying. I could set up this bit of cotton and potentially it would go flying depending on the wind. You can see it doesn't take a lot to disturb something like that. So you get videos of people who are like shoving their ferro rods on there and they're pushing and all that good stuff. I'm kind of the impression sometimes that we are expecting like these big, huge gale force hurricanes to come through and smash everything. Now, obviously, if you live in a different part of the United States and you have different weather conditions, and that's kind of a big deal. I'm not going to take away from that. But the first thing is knowing your own environment. Now, I tried to uh, light up jute with the uh, fair rod as well. And I found that jute twine, even when you uh, take it apart and you turn it into a bird's nest, or bird's nest-like, uh, fluffy, if you will, when you make it nice and fluffy, it's harder to light than cotton. I've got some cotton twine on the way to me, just because I want to see if like, it's the twine that makes a difference, or if it's the material that makes a difference. Jute supposedly has a lower burning temperature, so I'm not sure exactly how it works. And again, would love to hear uh, people's stories on their luck with that too, that'd be great. Mainly I uh, decided to make this video just so people could sort of see the process from the beginning of I know nothing to the, well, I know enough to know that I don't know all the things, but hey, here's some stuff that I do know, which, you know, I think everybody would like. So I found that by taking a bit of cotton and just tying it in the jute, like seriously just tying it in the jute, I actually have something that'll work perfectly with the spark light. It doesn't cause me any problems. Um, the whole like waterproofing, you know, in the end cap thing was really awesome, but you know, it just seemed a bit excessive. Uh, not to mention it didn't work. There's the fire bag, I totally forgot about it. It didn't work. I could relight that uh, cotton ball with a petroleum uh, four, five, maybe six times, and I would be hitting areas of the cotton ball that weren't charred, and it just wasn't going up. And that was frustrating, you know? And I'm sure that some people will blame the size of the spark light, and that's possible. But what I'm finding is that pretty much anything that the larger ferro rod can do, the spark light can do a lot more accurately. Now, it doesn't put out the same heat as the ferro rod, but in a lot of cases, that simply doesn't seem to make a difference. And you can see that was actually fairly windproof as well. And that's all I wanted that for. Now, the cotton itself, right, fairly cool. And the jute is actually cool enough for me to just put my finger on. If I leave this burning for, if I leave this burning for longer, uh, and I take the glowing portion off of it, I can still pretty much just pinch the jute, put it out, which means I can actually put it back in my sparkler container. Cotton is kind of finicky. If you can find an area there... There's no cotton in it, right? It will relight. In fact, just to prove that it will, more so for my own curiosity, just to make sure I'm not spouting up nonsense, because, you know, again, fairly new to this. Big tip for those who uh, don't do this on a regular basis. I know that a lot of you do this every day, and you're laughing at me right now. Put your tinder away. Like when you're, or you're kindling away. When you're starting a fire like this, keeping this open. I've learned from experience that the um, the fibers on the uh, the jute that I have in here. This was the original idea that I had for a waterproof case. I was hoping to do everything with jute cord, and just the jute to me <coughs> isn't reliable enough because I'm using it for a different purpose, mind.
so it'll relight if it's given enough convincing, shall we say. And there's that. But yeah, put your um, put your kindling away because your kindling will catch and will set fire to something that you don't want to set fire to, especially if you're in an urban environment. And poof, bad stuff happens. It's also nice to know that if I have this in a tinder box, right, I could seal up the tinder box that it won't set the rest of my kindling on fire. I never understood why they don't call it a kindling box. Anyway. So, spark light case, I just took the the spark light, uh, the tinder quick tabs out of there, and I just put in cotton and jute, and for cigarettes, I mean, you saw that works great. If I need it for other purposes, like I need a match, I would rather have something like this because the auto ignition temperature of the materials in here isn't all that great actually. Um, let's see here, jute is just shy of 200 degrees Fahrenheit and cotton is uh, actually harder to light than that. So for what it's worth. Again, I think it's the fluffiness of the material. I think it's the actual denseness of the material, but I'll find out once I get the uh, the cotton twine. And this fire bag is small enough for me to put in my EDC, put away. It doesn't cause me any kind of problems. Except for, of course, you know, losing the damn thing. Because I'm just small. Uh, for what it's worth, we've still got a flame in the end cap. The end cap by now is way too hot to, to hold. Which, I hadn't been thinking about just having a candle, if you will, um, made out of petroleum cotton ball. But that's essentially what it's become. Uh, and at first I had goofed off at the idea of creating a candle that could be lit by the spark light, because... Portability is a huge thing. I mean, I can carry this in my EDC. That's great. I'm no under no impression that this is going to like light on fire in my EDC or anything like that. It's just the spark light is so much more compact. And as I said before, accuracy is a thing. Uh, being able to hit exactly where you're aiming at with those sparks, you know, being able to get right on there and hit it, is actually kind of important. And when I can take a spark light, I just and it's done, and I don't have to worry about setting sparks all over the place. For me, in my environment, that's pretty useful. I mean, the wind doesn't really feel like 9 miles an hour. That's what the, the weather report apparently says in Vegas, but it doesn't feel like it. It's just a sort of really light breeze. Uh, would it be enough to blow this out if it wasn't in the end cap? Possibly. I mean, we can see here from the smoke on my cigarette that... Well, I'm not sure if you can actually see the smoke in the cigarette. No, I don't it. You see from the smoke in the cigarette that, I mean, it's going sideways, so... It's not like there's no breeze out here, but... And this isn't a particularly scientific test either. You know, I'm not addressing different... Conditions, variables, etc., etc. Uh, that has gone out a second time. So, windproof, not really. Wind resistant, oh, I'll give it that, but windproof, no. Um, so, quick note on this as to what I'm going to do next. The idea, and I'm just going to open up the EDC here for a second, is I've got a metal striker attached to the back pocket of my Maxpedition beefy um, pocket, organizer, pocket organizer. I swear I was capable of human speech at one time. So if anybody out there asks, should you do this? The answer is yes. Would I do it? No. So that's enough for me to be able to reach in here. Yeah, that's really hot. 
get in there and fluff this thing. And for the sake of argument, I'm going to use the uh, spark light again to light this. The brass spark light from Four Seasons, um, like I said before, there's an Allen wrench, and I may have forgotten to explain why the Allen wrench is in there. The flint's replaceable now. I've used a Zippo flint in the spark light. It works, but you will tear through that Zippo flint pretty quickly. In about a day and a half, call it two days, of goofing off with the Zippo flint flint pretty extensively, uh, I wore it down to a nub, and, but I mean, I was lighting it pretty frequently. The, um, the flints that they use from Four Seasons are black, they're longer, and they seem to be a little more resistant, they seem to be a little harder uh, in terms of magnesium content, so... They seem to throw off a better spark, too, so I'm thoroughly confused on that. I have no idea why. If anybody can answer questions on that, I please, like, I would be appreciative. <clears throat> so we're on relight number three. Um, the last time I did this, I was in a garage, and the flame stayed lit in the garage. For about 32 minutes, I was thinking about videoing it, and I went, eh. It's probably going to stay lit for like maybe 10 minutes or so, and that's going to be the end of it. But one cotton ball... Chrissy, do you remember how much I spent on the cotton balls? Something around, what, $1, 2 So, call it $2 for like, what, 200, 300 cotton balls? Okay, so for less than a penny, a cotton ball, and the cost of the petroleum jelly, which is honestly not all that much, so let's just call it three cents total for the product, right? I've got a waterproof um, Tinder Quick tab, effectively, that will just keep burning. I've relit it, this is number three now. Which means I, I could just keep using this thing for as long as it's got petroleum in it, I mean, hypothetically. Uh, on the one that I burned in the garage, it had only burned the top of it. When I flipped the cotton ball over, there was a bunch of unburnt area. Uh, interestingly enough, the cotton ball was actually very difficult to light at that point, so... Not sure exactly how to explain that, I don't know the dynamics here. but may look into that later out of morbid curiosity. Could you take the end cap and just put it into a fire pit? I'm sure you could. The end cap that I bought is something you can find at Home Depot for like $2.50 uh, in the Vegas area. I'm sure other people can find it for cheaper. <coughs> it's a one inch. Um, galvanized steel end cap. The galvanized steel is coated with zinc to um, to keep it waterproof and supposedly the lifespan on these is supposed to be over 50 years on the ground, 70 years on the ground let's just call it, uh, because the zinc basically corrodes first and then the steel does so it's not even going to rust, you know, unless I'm burning zinc off at these temperatures, and I'd have to look up the burn temperature of zinc to find that out. So kind of interesting in that regards as well. And you can see I've still got this sort of low, lazy flame coming out of here. So, I mean, hypothetically, I could put this, like, at ground level. I could dig a little hole, put my end cap in there, uh, start with my ferro rod if I want start with the spark light, which is what I would prefer, uh, because again, compact is a thing, uh, at least it is for me. Uh, bury this ground level, put the kindling I need over it, or alternatively, I could just light this with the spark light, put my kindling in there, um, and then put it out, 
you know, use this again. So for what it's worth, um, yeah, this video, I mean, I've said it before, was actually made for www.survivalistboards.com. Uh, a lot of things, guys, give me a lot of really great ideas. This started for me just wanting to be able to light a cigarette with a spark light, trying to figure out how I could do it, and it's become something more than that. It's not quite a hobby, it's more like an obsession at this point. Uh, which will become something else, I'm sure, fairly uh, quickly. But it's kind of neat to see, you know, just what's possible out there. Of course, if at any time I wanted to just snuff this out, uh, I could just close this right on top of the flame and twist it. I wouldn't do that with my hand, obviously, because this is still really hot. But I could just twist that in there, and it would immediately snuff the flame out. I could even stick the other end cap on top of the end cap, right? And that would put it out. This is a uh, two inch nipple, by the way. So, end cap plus end cap kind of looks like a pipe bomb. Kind of the other reason why I just. Uh. But I mean, how difficult is it to carry on an end cap with a petroleum jelly cotton ball in there? The threading actually holds the, uh, the cotton ball down. So, you don't really have to worry about getting petroleum on anything at that point unless it jabs its way into the end cap. I guess if you really wanted to you could seal it up with a plastic bag and there you are so. We're at the 27-ish, 27.30 I think is what's going to show on the clock now uh, for the for the deal and it's still going. Granted I've had to relight it a couple times, but yeah, I think that'll I think that'll do it. And if you can't start a fire in twenty minutes, and I just don't know what to tell you at that point. I mean, for my purposes, you know, just being able to light a cigarette, I needed to be able to do that in a reasonably short period of time. You know, and I'm thinking that if I am able to weave cordages together, so to speak, then I can do some other things there too. I've seen a lot of paracord that has like wax jute twine in it that's water resistant, it's got fishing line in it, and that's all really cool, but too complex for, for my purposes. Besides which, who wants to tear a perfectly good cordage for... You know, if you if you need it, like, great, it's there, but why would you do that on, like, a semi-regular basis where, like, I need a fire source, like, say, four, five times in a day, let's just say. I don't know why you would tear up cordage for that, that's just me. Just seem to be able to take that, twist it, hold it. You can see it's not blowing away. That's because the fibers are grabbing on each other. I could have pulled out the spark light, but you know, we all want to see stuff burn. That's why we're here. This is enough time for me to pull out a cigarette, jaw a little bit, and light it. Not a huge deal. And if you need more of a timer on it, you just pull out more jute. Part of it too is also the whole think uh, smarter not yeah, work smarter not harder. And you know, when you start thinking along those lines, yeah, I could try making this bird's nest out of jute and 
I tried for a bit. It, it'll actually work. It takes you a couple of strikes with the spark light. In some cases, two, three, and other cases like ten, twelve times. You're just hitting um, jute strands after they've been fluffed out the twine. With the spark light eventually it'll go up. Uh, with the ferro rod, it was conditional. The ferro rod, like, if I had enough cotton on there, which, all things told, wasn't really all that much, I mean, honestly. If I had enough cotton on there and I could get the ferro rod angled properly, that generally required more material, right? Uh, then, yeah, it was fine. So... Can you do this with a ferro rod and, you know, just a bit of con in there? You absolutely can. There's no reason you couldn't. It's just a question of what you want to carry at that point. I dropped a line to Andy over at Five Coal uh, regarding the Four Seasons flints. Uh, yeah, so Four Seasons' website is kind of weird on that. They actually say quantities of five, and then you're able to buy them one at a time, question mark, question mark, for like 25 cents a flint for the spark light. And shipping to Vegas from Four Seasons, which is in Pennsylvania, is just like $20. It's like, wow, I have to buy how many?